Thank you very much. <laughs> well, I just wanted to say welcome to everybody and thank you all very much for coming this afternoon. Um, I think we'll be pleased to see the exhibition and to see the work that's been put into it. Um, the exhibition really started uh, with a call from Debenhams at the time of closure. And they said, we have uh, quite a n number of um, ar archive items that you know, we'd like to offer. Would you be interested? Uh, and I said, yes, wow, we could do something with that. But then from that grew the idea of celebrating the department stores, uh, the demise of the department stores in Eastbourne. So we, we delved into the rich history of, of all four major department stores. Beals originally, which became the co-op. Dale and Curley's that became uh, the Army and Navy and Barker's and ultimately T.J. Hughes. Um, Plummer Wallace that became Cross and Hamblin. And uh, Bobby's, um, last but not least, that became Debenhams. The focus is mainly on Debenhams because there's such an archive of it and we haven't been able to put everything out that we've been given due to our lack of space here. But um, I think we've got the core message uh, that you know, this is how shopping used to be, and this is um, really to show what a, what a shame it's gone, because everyone now seems to be buying online, and, <laughs> oh dear, <laughs> that's the way it seems to be going. Um, so it's a celebration of department stores. Um, we've had a lot of fun doing this. Um, we, we set up a subcommittee um, of Alan Wenham and Paul Jordan, um, and Paul was the, uh, the main author of the um, exhibition, um, and Alan contributed with you know, positive images, um, suggestions of um, how we would um, write the uh, exhibition, and um, and then we had other uh, people from outside coming in. You know, the, the local history society provided images as well. Um, so it's it was a, it's been a fun project, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. So we opened it towards the end of last year, but we wanted to wait until the spring to uh, have the official opening. And uh, so this is what we have for this afternoon. We tried to recreate the feel of a, a department store as it would have been, and uh, the main emphasis is on the original Bobby's restaurant, cafe restaurant from the 1920s and 30s, and they had a big palm in the middle of the room. <laughs> Um, we'd like to have created a dome as well, but that didn't quite work out. <laughs> and um, with uh, you know, our, our um, histories of the, the um, other department stores, cafes as well, because they had um, orchestras play during the day, you know, you'd, and, and, and there would be a, a conductor in full tails and a whole orchestra playing. I mean, it's just unbelievable, isn't it, when you think about it? You think, no, you just get a cut thrown at you and you know, <laughs> grabbing the money from the other side of the counter. But there was real service in those days. And really, this is another aspect that we, we wanted to explain, that you know, service was so important. Uh, it was so much a part of, 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 of the retail business. And that seems to have um, diminished an awful lot. So um, for those of us who remember, service as it was, you know, and I know we all would have done, um, that's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's nice to be reminded. I do fear that the younger generation today have never known service, and so they will never expect it. And that's very sad, really, but for those of us who do remember it, um, we can at least uh, come and enjoy the exhibition. I'm going to hand over to Richard now, because Richard um, is going to say a few words. Oh, it's lovely. I don't normally dress up like this, but it's normal, you know, summer clothes in the middle of winter. <laughs> but I thought I'd try and create a bit of atmosphere of um, how wonderful these department stores were. So the reason for putting on the exhibition um, is obviously because of the decline of the department store and how that's going to affect Eastbourne, which had so many. But first of all, I would like to congratulate Nicholas and his team on putting on such a fantastic exhibition. Yeah. <laughs> 
matter why have we put on the exhibition, which is probably more. We're not a museum. We never have been. We're still waiting for the time when Eastbourne will have a museum and can just put on exhibitions about history just for the sake of the fact it's interesting history. Mm. Maybe not with much relevance to now, but of course it is, because history is important to where we are placed today. However, we've got some vitally important heritage problems with the closure of department stores, and the rest of the country has two, which is why Save Britain's Heritage have produced a major book on the decline of the department store. And nobody at the moment will ever believe that we'll have department stores back again. They've finished. And they've been killed off by the internet, by everybody doing their shopping online, um, and they're not going to come back. So we've got to adapt, and therefore some of these buildings, which Save Britain's Heritage calls the cathedrals of commerce, mm -hmm. and they really were. They were like medieval cathedrals to religion, as now shopping was to the people who went to department stores. And in Eastbourne, we've got these fantastic buildings left over. So we've had a modicum of success so far with TJ Hughes, the developer there, listened to the big petition that Terry and others got going. Um, how many was it, Terry, we had there? 4,000 just over. 4,000 signatures. I mean, it's amazing. We had, we had more than at the, the petition to save the, old, the Marks and Spencer's building in Oxford Street. Yeah. <laughs> so we had that success, but of course the developer's got to sell it off, so we watch this space. But if everybody wants the facade of T.J. Hughes to remain, which is a wonderful facade by one of our most distinguished architects, Stone, um, and unfortunately Stone's work um, <laughs> used to be in the Pierre Ballroom, which is called Fire, St. Elizabeth's Church, a listed building which has been demolished, and most of his major buildings now don't exist. Wonderful array of his houses, but um, so that's important architecturally to be small. But then Debenhams, right? Well, we've talked about how the service. I used to go as a little boy. This is pathetic, isn't it? <laughs> With my shorts by an adopted aunt, Aunt Dot, to tea in Debenhams tea rooms, and was overawed by the palms, the tea. Yes, the service, the wonderful dome, and these incredible murals on the wall, which Wedgwood which must still be there, but Chris, I'm looking at Chris, <laughs> I would love to go in and just see what the state is like in there. So we've got that wonderful building, and you probably didn't notice when you came in, but we've recreated what was the arcade that Debenhams had. Um, and so um, the hope is that that bit of the building, have a look on your way out, you'll pass underneath an arch. Um, and that was Bobby's Arcade which sadly took a full force of the bomb in 1940, which destroyed Marks and Spencer's, an absolute tragedy of human life as well. It was awful. But um, after the war, the beautiful entrance to the Bobby's Arcade was not reconstructed, and there's a sort of 1950s front there. But up above, the elevation with its towers and turrets is still there. So we would really love to see that part of the building um, restored with an arcade that would lead through with specialist shops through to Lismore Road. That's our vision. And we'll fight for it. We'll get petitions. We won't be nasty. I might chain myself to the railings. <laughs> but um, <laughs> we really want to save that, if nothing else. And we don't mind people converting the rest of the building to flats or whatever, but it's that part of the building. It's part of our heritage. So have a look on your way out and you'll see that. So that's it, really. I'm not going to say any more because there's too many good things to eat and drink. But enjoy the exhibition. <laughs>
leisurely shopping and, and wonderful buildings. And we can conjure up all kinds of names. And one of the things I've tried to do in the last few days is look for names. And I found it very confusing because one name merged into another. <laughs> and I'll just use the name that you have there. There's Bales. There's Bobbies, who, who were known as the Harrods of Eastbourne, I believe. They then currently went right back to the beginning and were subsumed into other names as time went on. And Plummer Rogers, I'm not sure because I didn't come across them in my, my research. Um, we're not going to bring back leisurely shopping again. But what we can do is to celebrate that part of our history which was department stores. And perhaps this exhibition will encourage all of us, and it's been, such as has been raised, to think about saving more of the wonderful buildings at that time. I could rattle on, but most has been said. Um, congratulations. It's a wonderful exhibition for both locals and tourists, and it's equally important. Every success. And I cut whatever ribbons that the horror team that needs to be cut, and I declare this exhibition open.